Isotopes. What are isotopes? Well, here's our definition. Atoms at the same element with different number of neutrons. So, if we talk about that, we know that if something is the same element, it has to have the same number of protons. So, if we have hydrogen, for example, and we have hydrogen isotopes, we know that their atomic number is going to be 1. But if they have different number of neutrons, that means they have different masses. So we might have a hydrogen that has a mass of 1, hydrogen that has a mass of 2. So if we go back and review, mass is equal to protons plus neutrons. Here, if our mass is 1, and we know with hydrogen that the protons have to be 1, that means that we have 0 neutrons. In this second case, if our mass is 2, our protons still have to be 1 because we're still hydrogen, so that number has to stay the same. So this time we have 1 neutron. Okay. Another way of looking at this is you can take mass minus protons to equal your neutrons. Okay. So when we have an isotope, this bottom number will always be the same, right here, because that's your number of protons that has to stay the same. Atomic number stays the same. But the mass number on top will be different because we'll have different numbers of neutrons and so our mass will be different. Um, some radio excuse me, isotopes are radioactive um, but not all. Some of them are stable um, but some of them are very very radioactive. It just depends what isotopes we're talking about. Here's our example I just drew out to the side with our hydrogen that has one proton here. We could put a plus on here to show that that's our proton here we've got a proton and a neutron. Okay, so again, um, hydrogen written with the mass after it. This is another way to write it. Um, or we can write it like this. So hydrogen with a mass of 2 can be written either way. Again, this bottom number is that atomic number. Okay, so different number of neutrons, but same number of protons. Okay, here's another way of identifying. Again, um, I've shown you a couple times that you can write it two different ways. Carbon, these are two carbon isotopes you can see here. We would write a 6 down here for um, the atomic number for both of them, but the masses are different. They can be written at the top here or as a dash with the number after them. <coughs> so what's the difference between mass number and atomic number? Mass number is going to be the protons plus the neutrons. It's always going to be a whole number. It's specific for only one isotope, and it's not going to be on the periodic table. Kay. The average atomic mass, which is what we do see on the periodic table, okay, is what we look up when we look up a mass. It's going to be the weighted average of all isotopes, and I'm going to show you how to figure that out in just a second. And it's typically a decimal. It's not a whole number, and it's the average of all the different um, masses of all the different isotopes. Okay, so how do we do this? This is our uh, formula that we use. It's the sum of the abundance of our isotopes, so that's pretty much the percentage of the isotope times the mass of that isotope. So it, this is a weighted average. It's not just an average, it's a weighted average, and there's a difference there because we're taking into account the percent of each that we have. We're not saying that they're all equal. So here's an example. We have chlorine um, 35, chlorine 37, and we're trying to find uh, what the average atomic mass would be. So if we're given our information, here's our two isotopes, the mass of each one, and that's also over here in the problem. So we've just taken the information given here and translated it over to here. Okay, so it's chlorine 37, but the actual mass is 36.966, so that's the number we want to use. They use AMU, or atomic mass units, for the label, and then it gives us the percentage, okay, for each. So if we have 24% of one isotope, and there's only two isotopes, you take 100, subtract the percentage from that, and that tells you the percentage of the second isotope, okay. So here, that's all put into this table for you. And what we want to do before we start calculating is take our percentages and put them into decimals. So you basically just divide by 100. OK, 
Okay, so what we do then, and this is written down here, but I'm going to rewrite it. Um, we're going to take the mass of our first isotope, which is 34.969, and we multiply that times our percentage written in a decimal format. Okay. Then we're going to add to that, whatever that answer is, our second mass times its percentage. So let me get my calculator here and we'll figure out what these numbers are. 34.969 is multiplied by 0 0.7578 and we get 26.4995. Um, one, two, three, four, five decimals. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Okay. And then we're going to take 36.966, multiply that times 0.2422, and we get 8.9532. And what we'll do for these so that we all do it consistent, consistently, always keep four decimal places. No matter what the significant figures are for um, average atomic mass, always keep four. Okay, and then we'll be the same. So we add these two numbers together. And we get 35.4527. Sorry about my crazy writing here. Okay, so we need to now look at this and make sure it makes sense. So if we have one isotope that weighs 34.9 and the other isotope weighs 36.9, we know that the average the weighted average has to fall between these two numbers somewhere. So here it's 35.45. That makes sense because it falls in there. And then I could ask you the question, which do we have more of? Well, you are given the percentage here, so you know we have more of this one. But if you look here and um, your mass is 35, almost 35 and a half, you would look and see which number is that closer to. Well, it's closer to almost 35 here than it is to almost 37. So we would know that this is the more abundant isotope, the one that weighs closer to 35. Okay, So that's how we figure out our average atomic mass.